Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Nerd Theory. Here with Josh from the Den of Nerds and also Movie Bros. Yeah, Movie Bros. All right, so let me pull this up, guys. If you didn't know, it's the hottest new thing on the tubes. It's Movie Bros. And uh, yeah, we uh, we want to possibly do our first video and a watch party tomorrow. Uh, and this is the channel right here. You got to go subscribe, guys. Almost already at 8,000, which is awesome. You can watch the intro uh, vid. There's, there's no sound, so they can't. Oh, they can't hear it? <laughs> I'll, I'll commentary. We're, we're saying the most awesome things right now. Uh, and we're talking about the channel. So, yeah, we're just going to watch movies that you guys vote on and go live and give our thoughts on it. But we thought it would be cool to do like a watch party for the first one uh tomorrow night and i had the idea to do and i'm interested in what the chat says but i think it would be fun to watch space balls because it's been a long time since i watched space balls and obviously a lot of people follow us for the star wars stuff so that could be real real fun yeah i think it'll be good so if you guys want to join in we'll be there and we'll do an announcement as well um as to exactly when and what time yeah and uh, you guys can join us in and then it'll be our first video yeah. So today's episode of Nerd Theory, we got some stuff to talk about regarding the finale for The Bad Batch. I know a lot of you are probably looking at the title being like, Luke's a baby. How is he going to be in The Bad Batch Season 2? Well, the thing is, Mount Tantis, and Josh, I want you to dive into this too. Yeah. Um, is essentially a place that the Emperor had in the Legends novel, which is one of the best novels, Heir to the Empire by Timothy Zahn. There's three parts to it. And Mount Tantus was a place where the emperor had essentially he held all of his weird experiments. And then eventually there was this guy named Joris Sabayoth mm -hmm. who was around during the Clone Wars and he cloned Luke to fight the original Luke. And he yes. called this Luke with the L-U-U-K-E instead of L-U-K-E. And it's a pretty weird story, but it's pretty freaking fun and cool. And it has Han and Leia and everybody intertwined. Lando, uh, Lando basically rebuilds Cloud City on um, is it Nomad City, yeah, something like that. And yeah. it, it's it's a really cool story. Uh, I implore you guys to go check it out. But essentially, that's what we're going to talk about today. Because at the end of the Bad Batch finale, I think that's what was happening with mm -hmm. Mount Tantus there. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. It's uh, so it's the heir to the empire trilogy, or it's the Thrawn trilogy, or whatever you want to call it, from Legends, where all of this really comes from. And you know, it's sort of in my theory for a long, long time that they would probably do a retelling of that story or a, a version of that story within the Mandoverse. So you know it, the emperor emperor had all kinds of weird plans and machinations and things like that going on and on this planet wayland there's this facility that is the facility that you see at the end of bad batch and i'll be completely honest with you guys i didn't even really put that together the first time i watched the finale no and yeah it there's me no a, way that they would do this yeah Pretty it cool. seems it seems so crazy and such a honestly very big thing to just drop as like a little easter egg at the end of an animated show like this is a really really sort of big idea here and george sabayoth he's such a cool character if you've ever read those books essentially what is going on in the galaxy at this point is Thrawn has taken command of the majority of what's left of the Empire. He's trying to pull it all back together and reestablish dominance of the Empire to sort of cure the chaos that's going on in the galaxy currently. Now, one of the reasons that he's doing this is actually because of a coming invasion from an alien species um, who is known as the Yusan Vong in canon. We think maybe that's being replaced with the Grisk now in the new Thrawn novels. But if you guys remember in the new Thrawn books, essentially the Grisk and the invasion of the Grisk is a reason why Thrawn comes into the Empire. He's coming in to see how strong the Empire is, whether they're an enemy or a potential ally in assuming like this big kind of coming invasion. Now, where Jaris, uh, where Sabayoth comes in, this is so cool. He's like a clone of a Jedi named Joris Sabayoth, and he's kind of goes insane and he takes over the mountain. And when Thrawn first meet him, it's like really, really interesting the, the dialogue and how he's able to convince uh Sabayoth to help him. 
And so he starts using this crazy cloned Jedi, which is already kind of a really freaking crazy idea. Eventually, Thrawn realizes Sabayoth, bad news, dude. Not a good dude. Insane. Not good for anybody. And so he prison he imprisons him in the mountain in Mount Tantis. Then Sabayoth, using like Jedi mind tricks, gets one of those people, one of Thrawn's people, in this secret cloning facility that's also in Mount Tantis to create a clone of Luke freaking Skywalker from the severed hand. And that clone, you know, becomes Luke. And there's this crazy battle between Luke Skywalker and Luke Skywalker. Sabiath goes insane. It, it, it's very, very cool. It's a very, very big idea. It's very bold and um, awesome. But having Tantus, Mount Tantus, it, like at the end, of that show shows us that hopefully Bad Batch season two will explore more of that and fill in some of the gaps of what was going on there. But for me, it lines up with everything I've been thinking about and everything I've been hearing about with the Mando verse or the Filoni verse and where I think Dave is going to take these new characters. So it is freaking awesome to me, man. I, I, I mean, when I saw that, I was like, I didn't even put two and two together. I didn't even think that that was a possibility. Hmm. And then people started talking. And I'm like, there's no way that they're going to actually try to begin. Because if they do that, then they have to bring back Joris Sabayoth. They have to bring all of these dudes into canon, essentially, yeah. unless they turn Snoke into the Joris Sabayoth. This is true. They could. Which would they, be. Meh. I, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I don't want it to go that way. I would hope. Like, here's what I'm thinking, because the, I, I'm, I'm pumped that you brought this up, because this is something you and I talk about a lot. It's like this idea that the cloning and all the stuff we're seeing is actually just going to take us basically to the rise of Skywalker and to Snoke. Right. And it's mm -hmm. like, Oh man, that's, that feels bad, man. Like feels bad because there's other cool stuff out there. Right. Like this legend yeah. stuff, hopefully what this little Easter egg at the end of bad batch is indicating. And we can hope is that while, yeah, we will eventually arrive at, you know, nine, that we can maybe take a detour and and hang out with some other crazy stuff that has to do with cloning. And I want Sabayoth or maybe a replacement Sabayoth, like maybe a Mace Windu or something, right? I'd love to see a new version of Sabayoth that was like tied into stories with this new Luke Skywalker. I mean, we talked about the homie uh, that's Lucasfilm hired the YouTuber, right? And yeah. uh, kind of indicates that we're going to be getting a lot of Luke. That's what I was thinking. So, but he also did too? so much work with Leia. He did work with Han Solo. I mean, so we could literally be getting the story of Heir to the Empire. Yep. Yep. And I and they and, and they can just leave the sequels as the sequels. Exactly. But this gap in between, and then I feel like this will definitely transform or or lead into the Mandalorian season three. I yep. think the big bad there could be Thrawn and Sabiath. Yeah. Imagine Luke. In live action, in the Mandalorian season three, going up against himself, but a, an evil version. Oh, I know. I mean, like, that would be crazy is like, I can just see like, because, you know, like at the end of the day, the reason I think we love John and Dave and Robert Rodriguez so much is because they're nerds like us, bro. Like, we can imagine them feeling like they're toys and feeling like yeah. they're writing in fan fiction, but they're actually doing it, right? Yeah. So, like, if I'm them, I can imagine them having that conversation. And I wish I could have been a fly on the wall where it's like, what if we did Luke? What if we brought back not only one Luke Skywalker to sort of, you know, maybe redeem what yeah, people yeah. didn't like, but we gave him two, bro. We gave mm -hmm. him an evil, super badass version of Luke that was like dark, bro. And yep. I think one of the things for me that's really cool is it's it, it won't just be a straight retelling. The, we actually have some kind of cooler pieces, in my opinion, like you, you we now have Ahsoka, right? Ahsoka didn't exist in uh heir to the empire we now have ezra bridger we now have cal kestis and we have the inquisitors which is something i wanted to tie into this conversation as well right so dave has the ability to do a, a 2.0 on this thing with like a lot more cool toys that the the new canon fans have really you know grown to love so this could be that perfect thing we always talk about this what could they do to satisfy new fans and bring a bunch of old fans back and make, you know, sort of the grumpier fans kind of less grumpy. I feel like this is the perfect solution for that. I think so too. Now, what if we take a little spin on that and say, okay, let's not, <laughs> let's not go with the clone of Luke, but what if they clone Anakin? Mm -hmm. What if they clone one of his hands? I mean, the emperor had access to all of his tissue 
especially you know right after he was constructing him you know during the construction after yeah. he lost to obi-wan it's like what if he created a a cl but I mean, then this is getting too crazy. Then it's kind of like my fan fiction. What if, uh, not my what if thing, the the animation that I did um, where Maul shows up, Dooku shows up, Anakin shows up, and like all these clones show up to fight Ray and Ben. Yeah, but like, honestly, there's a little bit of me that's like kind of like, why not? Now, now I totally agree that, that Anakin specifically crazy. is tough because he's the chosen one, right? And like, honestly, dude, he's so strong that like, I don't know. Like, that's just really, really tough. But at the end of the day, Luke would be formidable enough at that stage, we think. You know, the Luke we see in Mando is even more OP than the one we saw in Return of the Jedi. He hasn't stopped training or getting stronger with the Force. He's he's very, very strong. So he could potentially pose a threat to Vader. And you also have all these other Jedi that could potentially pose a threat to Vader. But they'd probably still have to downpower the clone of Anakin in some ways, but uh, just as such a fan of, you know, Hayden and, and that kind of stuff, I'd be down for it, but I don't know. I think, um, I think they will potentially have somebody else uh, be Sabiath, not, not quite to the level of him because look, this Sabiath was very, very powerful. Like he was really, really strong, but a little bit of that comes from his insanity. And like he, he was, he was a weird character, bro. Because like there are parts of it where Luke isn't even, uh, he doesn't even think he's a dark Jedi. He's like, no, nah, he's not quite a dark Jedi. There's no real darkness, like I felt with uh, Vader and the Emperor, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's, I don't know, there's a lot of. Yeah, there's go there's one good thing I think that could come out of um, Luke being so different and and so mishandled in the sequel trilogy, and. He's obviously a shell of himself, or not even that. He's just like a completely different person. He's Jake Skywalker, as Mark Hamill said. So mm -hmm. I think if they really want to tell the story and make that make sense, then they need to give some serious trauma to Luke Skywalker before that happens. Yep. And how could they do that? I don't know. Imagine him going up against his father's younger self, a clone mm -hmm. of his father, and being absolutely destroyed, and then the Empire constantly hunting for him to get a sample of his tissue so that they could continue to make a clone army of him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would run away it. and he'd be like, I, I, I have to run away. Otherwise they're going to find me and they're going to make a, an army of me's. Yeah, I agree. That's I maybe think... a way that they could fix that. But I agree. With otherwise that. Luke running off to Octu to be a little P boys, like just, just doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. No, no, dude, you're, you're so right. Like that would make sense. And there were parts of like, you know, to the credit of some of the people that were involved in this, because it's really like a, it, it's just a whole bunch of different eras that happened. But like Jason Fry, who wrote the novelization for The Last Jedi, he takes more time in going into this, this sort of thing that Luke was on, where he was like, if I came back, it would just create a counterpoint. And then like, there's, there's at least more thought given to like mm -hmm. Luke and the balance of the force and why his presence is actually creating negativity in his mind. So yeah. like, you know, kudos to him and that whole thing. It's, it's just pretty much mishandled between the two films and the, and the differences. We don't have to go into it, no but problem. I do agree that number one, adding this trauma with Luke is super important. It is super important to getting us to that point. I also think just sort of, for us fans, it's important to see him do some dope action -y stuff and, and have that crazy yeah. last adventure, right? Um, so those things are operating. But you're right, if the cloning thing, and if they do create a clone of Luke, bro, like he's not going to want to be active at all. This would be a big reason for him wanting to be hidden, is not wanting a clone, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, of him running around because he recognizes how powerful he became and, and what that could do to the galaxy if he went to the dark side. Like, And there's these cool lines in uh, Heir to the Empire where like Luke is talking about how really Sabayoth is truly recreating his vision on Dagobah. That when Luke fought the Vader that was him on Dagobah, that really what that vision was of, of was of him fighting his yep. own dark clone. It's just like there's a lot of cool stuff in it and like legitimately just getting me sort of giddy and pumped just thinking about it. Like, which is Josh, what you if, want, you know? If this happens, this could be single hand. Like people don't understand this could be this could bring Star Wars back on the map for everybody. Mm -hmm. There will be no more division. It'll be absolutely insane if they were to do this kind of a story. 
like thinking about it just makes me extremely excited about where this could go and, and how it could lead into uh, the book of Boba and maybe getting a second season for that. And maybe, you know, it'll continue to focus on Boba. It'll, you know, Mando will continue to focus on Mando, but in those shows, we'll get pieces and segments of these villains of Thrawn, of Sabaoth, of all of these. Dude, I want to see the, 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 what was it called? The Salamari. Yeah, those yeah. things are so freaking cool. So, chat. If you don't know about these, they're they're these <sighs> lizards that repel the force. So, when they're like in the air to the Empire, when they're around Luke, he couldn't use the force. Yeah, exactly. So he has like that's one of the things that Thrawn does before he goes to meet Sabaoth at the Mount Tantus is that he goes and gets the Salamari, and he's got them on his shoulder, and it creates sort of this force field. Now. I would say they probably change that in canon, but I'm totally okay with it, like dampening the force. And don't the Grisk already have something like that where it's like they're weird in the force? I think in that somebody in chat helped me out here because there was something in um, one of the books where Anakin and Thrawn are working together and they encounter the Grisk. And I believe Anakin makes a comment about them in the force, uh, which sort of could mirror like the Vong and maybe even what the Yasalamari do. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with you. This could be the thing that brought everybody together. And I mean, Thrawn is such a big deal. Like they're doing a lot with this character. I believe this is, you know, in that Ahsoka episode in Mando two, which was like, it's like a post credit scene almost, right? Like it's, it's like they're building that sort of their Mando Avengers or whatever towards this big threat. You mm. know, she specifically asks, where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? That's a big freaking deal, dude. Like it indicates that big thing happening huge important character going after him now she's just going for ezra but there could be other things involved this could be the way by which ahsoka realizes you know what thrawn is doing now uh i, I am kind of curious about this because in the heir to the empire luke han you know all of these people they're all about stopping thrawn because they view him as the absolute enemy the one that's evil the one that's bringing back palpatine's ways but that's not exactly what's going on and thrawn is actually trying to help the galaxy in his own crazy way to set up for the coming vaughn like thanos uh, yeah well do you think that they're gonna lean into because this was something i was talking to people on on our discord about this this is something that some fans have a concern about where they're like well thrawn isn't really a big bad but if they do this, it kind of seems like they'd have to make him the big bad just to get people to accept it and understand it. I mean, what do you think about that? Well, people don't get the fact that Thrawn literally makes Spock look like an idiot. Right. True. Oh, no. The Trekkies <laughs> are coming. <laughs> the Trekkies are coming. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, uh, like, it's Treason then. Uh, no, it's true. He's like a, a Sherlock Holmes, like quick as a whip, like it's bizarre how intelligent and uh, but he's also not necessarily pure evil right like he's got no weird attributes about he's him. like dooku yeah yeah do you he think that he's work? doing something for the greater good yeah do you think that'll work or do we need like a because palpatine we need to so evil, we need bro. we need a dark jedi and we yeah. need thrawn yeah the two of them together are like Bruce Banner and the Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm with it, man. I, I, I'm so down. I I wonder if they will, because it's kind of like, you know what's so funny about this is like, you got to think like, how much has Dave been setting this up? Because in all like realistic fact, like I don't think Dave knew he was going to get this job or have the ability to, to be an EP or to even do stuff on uh, Mando per se. All the way back, bro. All the way back when he brings Thrawn back into Rebels, right? The mm -hmm. discussions he's having with Timothy Zahn. Zahn writes into it the Grisk. Like, he's already writing in, like, a version of what happens in uh, Legends with Thrawn. But he puts in the Grisks, you know, instead of the Vong. Right. And, and, and you're starting to see all these pieces pulled together. What what Dave just did with Bad Batch, it's like, dang, dude, like, was this dude, like, kind of secretly planting seeds for Heir to the Empire in canon, like, be since then? Whew. Would be surprised, dude. It's crazy, dude.
I mean, the amount of thought process that he probably put into this means that he really did have a plan for a long time. Yeah. And he had to have because he saw the sequels and he's like, okay, why? And I'm speaking for him here and I shouldn't, but I assume he would have said, okay, so things are a bit of a mess. I need to make sense of this. And I can do that if we just go back into some animated shows and draw the story out so that it ends up here. Because we have here and we have here. So how do we get this middle part to bridge? I think I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And someone someone in chat said, you know, oh, oh, what if we put Mara Jade in there and then, you know, Luke falls in love and stuff as they usually would, as they did in Legends. And then uh, she dies and he's experiencing trauma over that too. And he goes into hiding. I don't know if they would go that far to do that, but. I mean, they could. Yeah, it's very interesting, right? And again, they have characters like Ahsoka, possibly Cal Kestis, and uh, Ezra Bridger as well, right? So they've got additional Jedi, so they don't necessarily need Mara Jade from just the Force perspective, but she is a really cool character. So, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't mind it if they did that or they did a version of her, but also like you know ahsoka in some ways can replace some of those beats and, and you know do some of that stuff so um yeah i don't really know and you know the other thing too and you know for some people this is like not the most popular thing but this could also be a very interesting thing for a young ben solo to be you know engaged with and and take a look at this because True. frankly like we know so little about that character but, you know, moving forward, I mean, it informs the character quite a bit if, you know, Ben ha sees, you know, Thrawn and he sees what a, a new Sabaoth, let's say, and then maybe even a cloned version of his uncle. And he sees how powerful his uncle could be if he went to the dark side, perhaps plants some seeds there as far as like, hey, Ben, you know, you could do the same thing and, and be as powerful as I am. This yeah. could be really interesting stuff that I think would add a lot of flavor and appreciation for even the sequels, which, you know, yeah, yeah, would, it would Just help. Just imagine if Ben sees Luke go absolutely berserk and loses his way and just like incinerates stormtroopers and just, yep, yeah, and loses the dark side. And, and you know, Dude, and he'd be like, sure. wow, this is possible. I want that. Yeah, exactly. And just watching all of that. And also, too, I think there's a sense in, in the character of Ben where, you know, he just like uh, Palpatine and essentially like his uh, grandfather before him, he sees the way out as being order. He sees order as being important, which is a very Thrawn thing, right? Like the order and the galaxy being or like in order is worth the cost of oppression. It's worth the cost of freedom. To make sure the galaxy is in order and safe right mm -hmm. i have secured my new empire right so you can see maybe a young ben solo start to see those those sort of ideas uh talked about by men that he might respect in some ways you know and then again that just informs ben moving forward i, I think it could be very very effective and i hope that a lot of the silence we're hearing from from disney at this point like about the future and stuff like i hope maybe those are things that are being considered and who knows, man? Like this could this could matriculate through not just Filoni stuff, but even in stuff like the Acolyte, even in stuff like Andor. We don't know for sure, but like there's the ability to pull these kind of threads together and set that up for you know what I think is gonna be Absolutely. something really fantastic, man. So I would love to see or at least have seen a bit of a cameo of Sabaoth and in episode one or something like that, sitting somewhere, or at least, you know, walking through the, show, the Jedi temple or whatever. But that, uh, that would have been awesome. But that's the thing. There's some stuff around that time period that could do such a thing. Right. So like um, even uh, to a degree, Bad Batch. Right. I mean, like depending on a flashback or something, Bad Batch around that time period, um, Book of Boba, they say that Book of Boba is going to talk about past stuff around empire time like there's going to be some flashbacks to around that time as well mm -hmm. so i mean who knows bro there's always the chance that like something like boba his connection to camino when it comes yeah. to cloning you, you just never know man you could be going there you could be getting there and in bad batch season two you could see like straight up you, like we could get it revealed in the next season of bad batch who the sabioth is going to be or who like the emperor yeah, I, I think i think that's you know? what's going to happen um 
I would love for it to be Sabbath. I, I would hate for it to be Snoke. Yeah, me too. Um, I don't think Snoke is around until... Yeah, well, yeah, I think Snoke might be around, <laughs> actually. I think Snoke might be around. I don't know. I don't, yeah, actually, he might. I don't, I don't, I don't, I want to, I want to believe that he's not around until after the Emperor dies. That he's not being used until after that point. I think that's the case, but I can't 100%. The, there's that comic run that I didn't really read that like has him where he's like a, he looks like a druid from Dungeons and Dragons. Like he's yeah, like he's, growing he's tree about, stuff or whatever. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He's on that tree planet. Yeah. Yeah. And he's talking to Ben. He's just like, uh, I encountered Luke Skywalker once and I fought him and he, kicked my ass and now i'm all disfigured and stuff so it's like when did luke fight snoke could That's that be the sabbath question. it could be he could be and honestly like here's the thing like as much as like we're kind of like oh man i don't know about it being snoke before snoke got cut in half and was revealed to be like he was so cool he was so cool dude like we loved that character and i even loved him in last jedi right up until he gets cut in half like he's Me too dope. the lines are great the way he blasts the lightning off the floor it was awesome so mm -hmm. I wouldn't be mad if that was the the person. Maybe the scars come from him and Luke actually Getting fighting. Sliced in half. But yeah. the, that's the thing with the scars is that if there are so many different clone variants of Snoke, then why wouldn't you just, why would you heal that one? And why wouldn't you just create so the next what? one, use the so, next one? Yeah, no, I, I hear you. So maybe it's a thing where, yeah, there's, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, know? It, it's hard to <laughs> figure out for sure. Like, why do all the clones... They spun scars. themselves into oh a web. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah, you, you might be onto something there. I mean, frankly, like, again, I think the thing we talked about earlier was like, dude, we're totally cool if they just leave Snoke there and just come to it eventually. You know what I mean? Because, like, mm. he, he has all sorts of machinations and different plans. And if Luke Skywalker shuts down Tantus, takes out his Sabioth, takes out the Luke clone, and then we roll into the sequels for sure. There's a contingency to that. And that's what we see play out with rise. Right. So like yeah. that is the way I would do it. We'll see how they go with it. But um, yeah, man, for me, like this is, this is the juice, dude. Like this would be like, this would get me like, I'd be like so hyped about this. If this in, indeed be, uh, is the way now, let me bring in the inquisitor thing real quick. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. So inquisitors teased for, Kenobi teased for possibly other projects in the future seems to really be a thing that the Inquisitory is going to be something that Dave is going to bring into live action in a lot of different ways. There were or there was one dark Jedi that was guarding Mount Tantis. Seemingly that dark Jedi was killed by Sabaoth. But here's the thing. Thrawn, the reason he gets the Salamari is not for Sabaoth. It is for the dark Jedi that he knows is guarding the temple. Well, what if instead of a dark Jedi or we see some of the Inquisitors turned into dark Jedi to also secure this facility? It could be this like I just see this web of like connecting it all together where we get because in the Ahsoka series, there's apparently going to be a female Inquisitor that's not all that down with what is going on. And we could see, you know, that character, you know, knowing maybe the Sabaoth or being connected to Tantus as well. So there's like, there's a lot of room to do really cool stuff. I think for me as a fan, what it excites me is like red lightsabers, baby. Like just more red lightsabers, more dark Jedi, more force lightning, just more dark side stuff in general going on. That's what I want to see. So but the only issue with the Acolyte show that I was thinking um, is that the Sith can't show themselves. They can't. They can't show themselves to anybody that survived. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So maybe they come across a Jedi and they just like kill him. They just kill him. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that. And also, too, there could be some people that know of them that aren't really connected to the wider story that like nobody would believe or something. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, they, it's like a vampire. No, it's like what? They, right. They, they exist. No, like legit Jedi that would have access to the archives or be able to report to the council can see them at all. No. <laughs> Do you think Ezra will be the new Sabah? I would love a dark side Ezra Bridger. I really would. Um, and they could clone Ezra and that would be insane because Ezra is very, very powerful. But to be honest with you, I would prefer a, an older, more mature uh, 
you know, Jedi. I guess we don't really know how old at this point Ezra will be when we meet back up with him. But I right. would personally prefer prefer an no, older one. We we would. I mean, it would be he pieced out before episode uh, four, five, and six. Mm -hmm. So there's thirty years, and there. now so that's he, five years after. So no, he'd be a, no, 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 no. That that's like that's like four years. And then plus five years after the Mandalorian, because Ahsoka is looking for him. Yeah, so it's, like, it's, it's like eight years. Nine yeah, years. but when he uh, wait, the span of the well, the Empire reigned for around thirty years, right? Yeah, and so it was like around thirty years later when yeah, after the Battle of Yavin, that's when uh, in the epilogue, uh, Ahsoka goes to get him. So at that time, I think he'd be around the same age as Luke Skywalker, actually, because I think there, uh, Ezra is 17 years old right at the beginning or at Empire Day. So, I, yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure he's he's as old or around the same age as Luke. Because Rebels takes place pretty much right before A New Hope. Yeah, it's like a couple of weeks before A New Hope, but then that epilogue skips all the way to after the Battle of uh, Endor. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, so we I don't skip know. like four years, three three years or so, four years. Mm. And then we do another five for The Mandalorian. Yeah. We get eight or nine. So they somebody in chat said that he's a year younger than Luke. So he'd be... Yeah, he'd be around that age, I believe. Okay. But um, he was 19 in A New Hope. So right. He was like 23, 24, same age as Anakin, pretty much, when he fought Vader. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, to me, that's cool, and I wouldn't mind that, but you'd have to explain how you cloned and aged up in Ezra Bridger clone to be older or as old as Ezra in a very short amount of time. I, and plus, like, for me, dude, I love, uh, I love the the old wise master. Like there's this sort of thing with Ben uh, Kenobi in the original Star Wars movie where he's very purposely doing an older mentor figure. It's an old wise hermit kind of thing, right? Um, that That is such an awesome idea. And there's something about that same like old wise Jedi like person visually, but then they're evil. It just does it for me. Like that's what I want. It's like I want an older, wiser jedi but that just happens to be insane you know what i mean mm -hmm. like as opposed to ezra which wouldn't it wouldn't be as good in my opinion you know? no i don't think so i think ezra's a little too mm, he's not gonna be as dark as like a like a legit dark jedi like sabbath sabbath is insane he's yeah crazy. it's fun yeah it's super fun so that's what that's what i would say to to that exactly but yeah no it's fun stuff man and like i said the the inquisitors i think the inquisitors could be connected to that and that's just a lot of fun, man. Like that's just a lot of fun to be had, and uh, a lot of fun toys to put in the sandbox, as it were. Well, they got a lot of toys to put in the sandbox. I just hope they're gonna do it. You know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What about Malikos? Who? Fallen Order. Oh uh, wait, is that the older dude? The old that... Jedi guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, because like that's a whole other side of the lore that wasn't fully in the new the... stuff. Yeah, like the Zephos and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Like that stuff would be sick to see brought into the new uh, Heir of the Empire. If they really do that, that would be sick, dude. It's kind of, dude, what it's kind of like you really have? exciting me. What, what other stuff do you have in mind for Palpatine to be making on Mount Tantus? Well, like, there was a, yeah. Well, freak. there was like, <laughs> there well, was weird stuff. Yeah, there's got to be. And at this point, especially around the Bad Batch time, they're probably just establishing the cloning part of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we can assume if there's nobody on Camino that Dr. What's-His-Face, Pershing, he's coming from Tantus as well, right? I mean, that's kind of where, where we're thinking. So is Grogu connected to Tantus as well? You know what I mean? Like, it, what exactly is going on over there? Uh, that That could be a part of it. But there's also like weapons and just a whole bunch of weird stuff. You think they uh, already got them? I think they already have yet, Grogu. At this point, they either already have him or they've already lost him, I think. You know what I mean? It, it, it would really depend on how long. We don't know how long he's been away. 
because we can assume like if they're going after him at the beginning of mando right then yeah. he's maybe he's just escaped then or maybe they've just realized where he's at i don't know it's it's kind of hard to say yeah kind of hard to say but there's a bunch of fun stuff that they could do uh with the mountain like they have just vaults filled with crazy stuff there's uh cl the cloning chamber there's like massive computer cores that have all of the the hidden knowledge that palpatine had throughout his years um yeah there's a, there's a, a good question stuff. actually how did grogu escape why were they I, being sent to find him that is something we got to figure out because you know we just know so little about that but seemingly with the connection to uh moff gideon right and gideon saying stuff like you don't even know what you have but it's more important than you could ever you know understand um sounds to me like that ties to emperor plans again we thought maybe snoke perhaps instead it is a big time plan to uh bring and you know what else would be kind of interesting is what if the facility on Tantis was designed to bring Palpatine back, but Thrawn kills that idea. And Thrawn's like, nah, son, like we're not bringing that dude back. Like that dude was bad news. Uh, and, and, and we find out that like literally Thrawn was one of the people keeping Palpatine away. Like as this was all figured out, you know what I mean? It could very well be Thrawn, yeah. Thrawn could have a more prominent role in everything. Yep. Yep. Which I think would be good. Thanks, Matt. Uh, could they reintroduce artificially force-sensitive troopers, maybe from Grogu's blood samples? Um, well, that's the thing, is that it's so difficult to do that, like we learned in The Force Unleashed. So I don't think it's that easy for them to just... And in Episode Nine, Palpatine was still struggling with it by making his son, who didn't have any force abilities, yep. who then gave birth to Rey. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, for or, sure. or you know, got with a lady who then she gave birth to Ray. Right. Um, Yo, know, Mars says I can confirm a Vader set for Kenobi show. Worked near it. This was last month and a half ago. About a Vader set to like his castle. Yeah, I think the castle uh, is going to be in it. Yeah, but uh... that's pretty cool. Yeah, 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 dude. Yeah. You know what else I heard is that it, so why, why, why are you biting? Why are you why are you being weird? You biting your tongue there? Is uh, it something you know you don't want to say? I don't know, man. There's you know there's always stuff you hear. You know there's always oh, stuff that you hear. But I know you, Josh. The shift in your energy. <laughs> Look, I just if I can't confirm something for sure, for sure, I don't like to necessarily say it. You know, but uh, I think that uh, people will be pretty pleased with the Vader for Kenobi. Oh. Okay. Well, don't tell me. I don't want to know yet. Yeah, it's going to be dope, man. It's going to be dope. Star Wars fans settling for mediocrity since 1983. How dare you? It's a Trekkie. He saw, he heard what you said. He heard what He's I said about Trekkie, Ron. Dude. I knew it. He heard. Okay. I knew it. Josh is alive again and bringing the energy again. Love it. Also, I would love for them to flush out the Cal storylines. Yeah. No, that would be fun. And I appreciate that. I am Donovan. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling good, man. Feeling good. And dude, Cal, I'm all about it. Flesh that out. No, let's say rescued Grogu. Mm. How mm. long do you think they're gonna keep her alive, dude? Because as soon as she fig as soon as she passes that knowledge on to the M Imperials, she's done, right? Well, she wasn't in Mando. We, we didn't see. Right. But they do live to be pretty old, so she could still be around. Maybe she's like super high up. She could be. She could be. I don't know. Maybe she let him go. Yeah. It's a good theory. She could have helped. Yeah. It's a good theory, Kev. I like it. Josh looks like a young George Lucas. His last name is Lucas. So. It is true. Don't look too far into it, folks. I've been sworn to secrecy about it. <clears throat> Maybe yeah. you're a Joris Sabayoth yourself. Oh, well, I am a little crazy. <laughs> You're a clone of a something. Could you imagine if they brought back Jack 14? Who's that? Jack 14? I don't know. I got to look this up. Was this like a droid in uh, like Mara Jade's droid or something? Let's see here. Maybe it's another Candace thing. It probably is. Probably did. Oh, it's a Sith clone. It's, oh. it's a, it was a force sensitive Sith clone created by Dooku. 
on Camino during the Clone Wars. This is why does obviously- he look like George Lucas? Uh, because it's awesome, <laughs> dude. That is wild, though. He looks just like George Lucas. That's, like funny. George. That's funny, dude. Okay. Why not? Let's do it. Uh, keep, do you want to bring it up on screen? Are you on Wikipedia? Yeah, I'm on the Wikipedia. Yeah, you know, anyone can manipulate that thing, right? What the for the most part, it's, it's yeah. Pretty yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. People are uh, people are usually pretty good about yeah, it. Yeah, they're not buttholes about it on there. Yeah. So it says it here, noble Luke's act was, but disastrous it is that the holocrons Vader has used them to attack as the Emperor will, and Luke's training will suffer. These holocrons were our last hope. No, there is another. We uh, we could do, if we felt it or not, an old friend we can call on. Helped us in the past, he has. Help us now. I hope he can. Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, Jack 14 was a force sensitive Sith clone of a basic clone trooper created by Count Dooku, Darth Tyrannus on Kamino during the Clone Wars. He was originally intended to be part of a much larger Sith clone army. After dueling and evading Mace Windu and Yoda, he escaped to Genosis, where he presented himself to Darth Sidious in the flesh. However, when Jedi Master Yoda fought Tyrannus on Genosis, he offered Jack the choice to join the light side of the force. Jack decided that he would choose no side. What? During the Clone Wars, Jack 14 was pursued by both the Separatists and the Galactic Republic. Wow. Refusing to fight, the Sith clone befriended Yoda's Padawans on Hoth and helped them to build beautiful things. Later, he was recaptured by the Separatists, who used him to make an army of Sith clones. When Dooku attacked the Jedi Temple, Jack awoke and used his Force powers to destroy Dooku's clones and to drive the Sith away. Despite winning the affection of the Jedi, Jack 14 decided to leave and find a new home. Later, he reconsidered his decision and helped the Jedi defeat the Sith and their Badawans on Mustafar. Dude, that's pretty sick. The hell's a Badawan? Like a Sith Padawan? I can't. Oh, Badawan? Oh, bad? What is this? Is this made up? Uh, it could be. Badawans is a group of Dark Jedi acolytes that count Dooku. It's all Legos, dude. <laughs> Why does this all look like Legos? What the? It's all Lego. Heck? What is Jack going 14 on here? also known as the moniker the, ma- the maker of Zaw was a male like, force sensitive individual who lived in the planet Zaw during the Galactic Civil War. What is this? Lego Star Wars the Freemaker Adventures? Yeah, yeah, the Yoda Chronicles, Lego Star Wars. I don't know. I don't know, dude. It's getting a little it's, wild for me. It's like an evil George Lucas looking thing. Yeah, I'm kind of down, but also like I'm not so sure. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about all that, but I I will say I love uh I love the idea of just cloning more Jedi and Sith, dude. Like, get us more whatever it's gonna take to get us more lightsaber fights and to get us more force sensitives on screen. And like, I would really like Luke. We all imagine that Luke did a bunch of cool stuff before he fell apart and went to Ock two. But let's see it, dude. Like, let's see the big, big thing that he did. Like, one more really big adventure when he's in his prime. That's what I really want to see. Let's just get some more Sid adventures. Yeah, more Sid. Luke meets Sid and he recruits him. <laughs> Be kind of funny. Hey, Luke, I need you to do some more missions for us. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Make yourself useful, will you? Yeah, get over here and get the mop. Get over here and get the mop. Evil clone Grogu Bendu Windu will be the dark. <laughs> um, Mars asked if there are any Disney employees here. Uh, I don't believe so. No, nah, probably but not. You never know who's watching. What True. if Chewbacca went into a one on one fight? With, they probably have some like <laughs> rules <laughs> at Disneyland. Uh, no tantalizing the people who work here, no uh, profanity, no nudity. Don't watch Star Wars theories. You do. Right. Yeah, dude, it's right there. It's right there. It might even be higher on the list, to be honest with you. Like... All right, you're hired. Uh, you, but yeah. here's a, a list of provisions and rules. Number one, do not subscribe to Star Wars Theory. Number two, don't watch Star Wars Theory. Number three, yeah. don't talk about Star Wars. Dude, we're Fight Club. It's Fight Club. We're basically yeah. Star we're Wars basically Fight Club. Basically Star Wars Fight Club. And you guys know what if going on in uh, Marvel right now? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so my Love channel it. is essentially the low-budget version of that since 2016. So, Amen. Amen. And that show's sick, too. I'm like, I'm enjoying it a lot. Yeah, shout out to Fantasy Theory. Guys, I, I, need, I need some love on my Fantasy Theory channel, please. Yeah, get on over there, folks. Please. Show me the Louvre. To the Louvre. Night. 
Give him the love. Show me. I'm going to show you the... Uh... I'm going to show you. This is my channel. Please go subscribe. Shit. I haven't uploaded in six months up until several days ago. Or yeah. eight months, nine months. The last time, yeah, it was 10 months. And then I just started going insane. But that's that's good, man. When you're six feeling it, you got to go with it. You know? Well, I'm working with a sweaty on there. So yeah. I've, I've partnered up with a sweaty on the channel. And he's... uh. He's been writing scripts. He's been going crazy. And um, yeah, so now I can awesome. finally get content out. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, sure. What if Chewbacca went on a one on one fight with Tom Brady's Bane? Who would win? Uh, Chewy. Yeah, of course. The Wookiees were just, they don't mess with Wookiees. They're yeah, man. insane. Let the Wookiee win. Yeah. Um, I'll have to watch the rest of the stream on replay, but I first wanted to say my mind is blown and my heart full. Thanks, guys, for making me excited for the future of Star Wars once again. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Yes. Least, though, appreciate you. Former Disney IT here. Oh! Surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. <laughs> Nice. Uh, I worked at the Void VR Star Wars experience when it was open. I have stories about the still canon story no one can do anymore. Ooh. Why don't you let us know about that? Can you tell us? Yeah. Maybe he can't. Maybe he's, like, he's probably signed so many things. It's probably not legal. The, the Disney snipers are probably arriving. At My school. lord, is that legal? I will make it legal. <laughs> They're going to get you, bro. Get out of town tonight. Get your bag packed and get out of town tonight. He's probably like, ah, it's all good. I guess I was wrong. There was no danger at all. <laughs> I'm on a roll tonight, dude. I don't use them for like months and now it's just, you know. Now you're ripping them. Ripping them. Yep. <laughs> That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Having fun. Uh, what's up from Buffalo, New York? Theory and Josh, who wins 1v1 Prime Boba Fett or Prime Cad Bane? Oof, Boba. Dude, I would say Boba, but that Boba would be too. close. That would be close. Boba. Cad Bane's awesome. Yeah. Cad Bane's legit. I hope we get more of him, man. Where did, where, like, where was he? Like, well, it's know. great that they put him in there, you know, and that's so we know he's going to be in season two, hopefully. Hopefully, even in that book of Boba Fett. Dude, I'd love to see an older Cad Bane show up in Book of Boba. That would be sick. Yeah. I think we'll get that. Yeah, I hope for sure. So. I think we'll get that. And uh, Bosk. Uh, what's the other dude? Dengar. Slasher. No, La Lash. Uh, is that wait? Is Lash one of the? Is he? Who's that? Is he's, that a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's like a cyborg now. Cyborg bounty hunter. <laughs> and uh, Boba hates him. My two-year-old in DNA with the void has expired. I would be more than happy to talk about it. Oh, is Sorry. NDA expired? Sorry, no, that's, that's not. It's not Lash. It's um. God damn it, what's his name? The cyborg one. Chad, help me out. IG-88? No. no. He's not a cyborg. He's a full droid. True. I don't know who the cyborg is. I want to Dirge is the most underrated here. and badass bounty hunter. They're just like Iron Man's Hulkbuster is suit. Bell you sure about... No, it's... um. Valance, Berlet, Ber I think it's Valance. Ballert, Valance. Yeah, he was a human male bounty hunter born to slavery on Chorin. Uh, God, who was it? He looks like a Terminator, dude. No, it's um, he's got like half of his face is like metal. He looks, yeah, he looks like yeah, a Terminator. yeah, 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 yeah. Valance, yeah. Let me let me type this in. See if that's what it is. Looks pretty sweet. Yeah, that's the guy. That'd be fun, dude. The I'm guy's all about that. Badass, yeah. It looks cool as hell. Um, did you hear about the Alex Ross concept art for Star Wars DC crossover that was being planned a long while ago for a comic? I mean, I think that stuff's perfect for a comic, uh, but I don't really want to see it in like live action or anything. You know what I mean? But uh, I'd love for it in a in a comic or something. 
My boys from the Melvin squad have returned. All hail the Knights of Melvin. The universe will be ours. Darth Melvin will show you the true power of the dark side. <laughs> nice, dude. Right, we, do we have some time? I'm going to show you guys Melvin. Yeah, show us Melvin. I'm curious. I'm going to show gonna... you guys Melvin, dude. I don't even know what it is. I'm going to show you Melvin. I don't even know about that. I'm going to give him some subs. Oh, wait, you did. Oh, yeah, yeah, he made a video. I didn't even know. He made a video on me, man. What the hell? Again. <laughs> right, yo, yo, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Look at that thumbnail. You see that thumb? What is it? Yeah, it's like a face or something? Or I like don't a know. Knights of Melvin. He made another Knights one. Knights of Melvin? Oh, 100%. Actually, I would invite Knights of Melvin. Inception. I actually, don't know who that is. Knights of Melvin. I like Knights of Melvin. He talks so much smack about me, but I actually really like him. And nice. we, we, we email <laughs> back and forth quite a bit. That's fun. Yeah. Just like total bro stuff. And then he'll make a video of being like, just dogging me. I'm like, he's like, I'm a toxic white male. This is what I do. And like, <laughs> Fair enough, dude. Do your thing. <laughs> Fair enough. Do your thing. <laughs> do your thing, my man. It's all good. No, he hasn't made a video on me in a while. What the hell, dude? <laughs> now you're going to get one. I hope. <laughs> and I did. I did. <laughs> this movie, episode nine, The Rise of Skywalker, in my opinion, was really amazing. <laughs> I genuinely, wholeheartedly loved this movie. I Dude, I was it. the same way when it first Plus, came out, bro. He's a shill. <laughs> it's a shill. Star Wars theory is a Disney shill. I don't like being painted with a brush that isn't. Who I am. I, I love this opportunity. I love Disney Star Wars. <laughs> Sometimes it just gets under your skin so much. It just. I can feel it. Star Wars theory is a Disney show. Just not all that interested in the sequels anymore. I don't want to cover it anymore. And it's all perpetuated hate. And it was all because I liked episode nine. It's like, dude, I don't even really like episode nine all that much. I really loved it. <laughs> it shouldn't be made to feel like I can't say that I loved it. I mean, ostracized. People will say like, oh. <clears throat> oh, he did, he's got his comment. Oh, that's funny. And every day, you know, I see things from other Star Wars channels and just talking shit and i'm so <laughs> over it and I've, I've taken the high road for so many years i've ignored it star wars theory the disney show and a social <laughs> media freak out on my youtube channel this is a classic meltdown people can change okay so i'm gonna say that before i tell you how i really feel about it people can change and there's always going to be a room for improvement, no matter what. Star Wars theory is a Disney <laughs> show. I'm inviting literally anybody right now that wants to come and talk with me. Oh, I love Knights of Melvin. He's a great guy. Is he good? Okay, I'll check him yeah, out. Yeah, he's made about, I think, 57 videos on me now. So sure. Melvin's <laughs> too, but I don't think it would work in his favor because he can't use his voice changes. On his latest live stream, Star Wars theory had a Star Wars <laughs> meltdown. Melvin is, uh, is this, dude. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, shout out to Nathan. I told him, I'm like, yo, I'll bring you on my channel. If Theory lost his shit over the secret <laughs> cut Levi from all you nerds, imagine how much of a Star Wars meltdown he'd have if he encountered Dark Melvin of the Knights of Melvin. I am going stronger in the dark side every day. He's strong. He's got 847 stuff. But I need more knights. That's amazing, dude. Go subscribe yeah, to Knights yeah, of Melvin. Yeah, yeah, Knights of Melvin. Yeah, dude, go show him some love, man. Um, that was hilarious, dude. 911. Not I haven't subscribed yet. I haven't subscribed yet. I'm I'm waiting till he hits that thou, and then yeah. uh, then yeah. maybe I'll show him some love. But uh, he's doing the Lord's work, that's for sure. That's he's doing uh, the Lord's work. He's he's killing it. That is I frequent his channel quite a bit. Just not lately. Hey, you know what? I feel like I finally made it because I was on a Knights of Melvin video with you. He man. goes after everybody, dude. He goes after Mike Zero. He goes after I don't know who else. But I've seen him go after a few other YouTubers, and I'm just like, this dude's so funny. Doomcock had a meltdown. Are the Knights of Melvin a part of the fandom menace? Doomcock is always wrong. Dave Filoni taking over. And it's just, a, it's a great, it's yeah. an entertaining, yeah. 
It's mm-hmm. an entertaining channel. I and and the thing is, when you talk to him, like privately, he's I don't know. He just feels like a bro to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit of performance or something, maybe. You know what I mean? Like he's just having fun with it. This some of that is like totally yeah. cool, man. You know, like I don't, I don't really, know, man. I don't get but, down on people for uh, you know doing their thing. The internet's a weird place. The world's a weird place. You know, have your no. I'm there. I'm just fortunate enough that he's making videos on me. Like mm-hmm. I'm at this stage where people are making videos on me. Like it's cool. I know it's a good problem to have. I always talk about that too. It's like you you all, everybody's got problems. You actually want a better kind of problem. You want different problems and you you want those bigger scale problems like that's a great problem to have you know melvin is jay i just subbed to the knights of melvin darth tooth exposed yeah he does a great job of exposing me um did you make a video about your top 10 <coughs> things you want to see in star wars in the future cartoons i made one like that a while ago and i think i titled it how disney can make billions <laughs> and i just listed a whole bunch of stuff that i want them to make just got my purple hat i love it thanks lego lord Hey, when are we going to play, Josh? When are we going to game? Dude, we're going to game soon. This week. You found so Josh's hopefully. alternate account. Are you Knights of Melvin? <laughs> I've been Knight of Melvin you for years. No. no yeah. uh, I don't know what he looks like. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll find out. Maybe Knight, Knights of Melvin should come to Star Wars Celebration next year and and confront us. We'll have a saber fight with him, and then we could you know recorded or something no dude i want i want him to join my collective That'd i want him to become one of my editors you know he does do some fun edits there <laughs> some fun yeah stuff. i want him to make some fun stuff for me <laughs> anyways um if you ain't got haters no i don't i actually don't think i don't think melvin's a hater i've seen haters and i don't think he is true but her point I, is sound though you know what is, i mean like it, sound, yeah yeah i suppose our Lord Darth, I bet you Carl's Jr. is Melvin himself right now. Could Melvin, be. I love you, dude. Yeah, he's doing good. Yeah. This was all or, pre pre organized. We had an yeah. email, and I'm like, dude, I'm gonna shout you out today. So just come in there. Bad it's batch, empty extra clone capsules in background of Nalase's lab. Extra capsules for duplicate clones later become Scar Squad. Two sets of Bad Batch cover Ooh. person is older Omega and Creel as KT lead. Whoa. I mean, yeah, kind of those. Funny. Did you see those extra tubes back? This I don't know. I gotta be honest. Like, I don't really think I caught that, but that makes sense. Like, you're talking about in the room in like Nalase's private thing, right? Yeah, there were yeah. like 12 or something like that. So, there are seven extra um capsules there. And I'm wondering, were they ever used? Were they did anyone create anything in them? Um, like, where are they? I mean, that would be it, leaves some fun stuff up for them to uh play with in the next season so i'm into it you think omega still has like a, a role to play in all of this as well like something big i think so I, I mean she's gonna outlive everybody and she's gonna be in book of boa i'm down i'm down you know i saw a cool theory and maybe you and i even talked about this of her getting the white prototype armor did you yeah. About that? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah yeah i'd be down dude because apparently you see that armor Mm-hmm. in Sid's workshop or yeah or, or office yeah I'm down that'd be cool yeah look sweet glad you are on our side theory Earth Melvin is <laughs> together and together we'll take down Disney yeah I love Melvin in the beginning I was kind of hit with and I was just like what the hell is this guy talking about why does he keep making videos and then um he sent me a few emails or something and then I emailed him back and it was just super lighthearted and funny and uh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't take that stuff like, like how you would expect someone to. I, I right. just think it's I'm just really fortunate enough to be able to have people making parody videos. I think that's that's wild, dude. It is that's cool. It is wild. Will we see an OB? I just think they're funny. Will we see an OB series teaser trailer before the end of September? No, I, no, but the thing on November 12th will likely have, I think, more than one trailer. And if anything, this could have been why we saw such a lack at, uh, you know, uh, May the 4th, because they could have been saving announcements for that thing uh, on November 12th. And then I think we'll get even more stuff coming out next year at Celebration and whatnot. So, Right. Please, guys, go subscribe to our new channel. We're going to be doing a Spaceballs watch party tomorrow. Josh, let's just 
set sets of time right now. What do you think? Would you want to just do the same time that we do nerd Five? theory? Yeah. Okay. I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. So eight, eight Eastern Standard Time, uh, five Pacific Standard Time will yeah. go live and uh and then yeah, we'll we'll all hit play together on friggin' uh space balls and we'll have a good time, man. Cause I haven't and, seen that yeah. movie in a long time. I'm pumped. Yeah. We'll do that thing where we uh where we did last time where we have both of us on the screen and we're just Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Down. That'd be fun, man. Yeah. Um, will we see I just did that. <laughs> What's up, Theory? Have you read the have you read the old Republic books? And if you have, which ones? I haven't read them all. No. Red Revan. Yeah. That one's really fun. The Darth Bane stuff's fun. I like the um, John Deceived. Jackson Miller. The the stuff with like uh I think with Zane and uh Zesh and, and those characters. If you ever read those comics, those are really fun. I've read those comics. I've read more of the comics than the actual novels. Yeah, those were fun, man. Um do you think Crosshair finds Cody and they both return for the Bad Batch season two. I don't know, but I mean, I don't know, but Crosshair's is dope, dude. He's probably one of my favorite Star Wars characters. He is just awesome. He really did earn his his place uh, at the he end, did. in my yeah. opinion. Crosshair and Kyle Ren are my favorite uh, Disney era, I suppose. Yep. yep, they're great creations. Yeah. Uh, what show do you love? Would you love Disney to make? They need a show about Secret Apprentice has to watch Grogu at the Jedi Temple canoeing Windu and Yoda. Um, I would say Palpatine. I want to see Palpatine's story from before he was a politician. So yeah. his younger life. Yeah, that'd be fun, dude. Have I read the Star Wars High Republic Into the Dark? No, I have not. No, I, I, I haven't. I'm still waiting for something uh, about High Republic to really grab me and someone to reach out and be like, oh, bro, you're going to love this. Mm -hmm. Nothing is really connected with me. And uh, yeah, no, no, no shade or whatever. If people like it, that's awesome. But, you know, the first book didn't really grab me. And then I never really got like a good word of mouth like, hey, recommendation. So. Yeah. What kind of hobbies do you have aside from lifting and YouTube? Um, little gaming, little gaming. Yeah, I don't know. I like biking. Um, Make, making soap. Making soap. Crocheting. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I, I, I'm a. Yeah, I just kind of really stick to myself. I don't really do much, to be honest. Um, I like comics. Yeah, 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 yeah. comics from time to time, but even that, not all that much. Um, I'd say watching movies. I really like watching movies. Yeah, dude, that's why I think Movie Bros is going to be so fun, dude. Yeah, you it'll know? be fun. We do one movie a week. Yeah, have you know, enlarge in our love for films and uh, yeah. watch some cool movies and some some you know. I think it would be fun if we watched even some like horrible movies. Dude, and like a watch party live together, and we're just like, what people were telling me Dragon Ball Evolution, which is so bad. No, I don't want to watch so that. So bad. Once was bad enough. I know. I actually saw it in theaters, bro. You know, the only thing that was cool about that movie was some of the Piccolo stuff, like the King Piccolo, Demon Piccolo, whatever. He was actually I, like at least in design and some of the parts. But like, it's been so long, I I really don't remember much about it. There's a fan film that was actually a billion times better. Yep, I've seen I think it. It was called Light of Hope. Yep, Light of Hope is sick, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They did a fantastic. Again, just another example of fans doing it better in studios. Mm -hmm. Studios don't know what the hell they're doing. They're just like, let's make some money. Yeah, it's all contrivances to yeah. them. Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. If the Sith infiltrator of Maul, the Scimitar, would, should in any way make a comeback in Star Wars? Yeah, depending when. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, Master and Apprentice and Ahsoka are amazing books that you two should read. We have read them. Dude, Master and Apprentice is sick. I have a signed copy in my living room. I oh, love do you? Yeah, I don't okay. love Master and Apprentice, Dooku Jedi Lost are probably my favorite uh, books uh, that, that came out after the, the sale of Lucasfilm. Yeah, they're very good. Who's a better true Sith, Darth Bane or Darth Sidious? And what do you think of Bane bringing back the title of Darth? I think it's pretty badass that he brought it back. 
Um, who's a truer Sith, Darth Bane or Darth Sidious? I don't think one is more true than the other. I think they're both just um, probably two of the best Sith out there. Yeah, yeah, two of the most powerful Sith out there. One, I mean, both with legacies that will last a long, long time, but neither one of them are the Sithari, right? I mean, the Sithari yeah. is supposed to bring the Sith back to, to full prominence, and technically neither one of them do that. Like, even Palpatine doesn't fully bring the Sith back to prominence because he hides the fact that he's a Sith from the Emperor, from the whole Empire, you know? Oh, yeah, but I guess that was for the greater good. It was for like his greater good, but not necessarily for the Sith. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like if he was Palpatine was about was. him, you think so? So I don't know. This is an interesting discussion. Maybe something I'd love to, to watch like a video uh, from you or something on this, because to me, I kind of view Palpatine as I don't know how much he actually cared about the Sith, because remember, he says, if you want to understand the greater mystery, you must study all aspects. He wasn't a Sith. uh he, he was almost like not like a Sith purist either because he studies Jedi stuff. He studies the the, the magic that uh, mm -hmm. Mother Talisman does. Right. So, you know, I always just viewed Palpatine as like he like because um, his master was way more about the Sith, way more about the Sith. Right. But like Palpatine was kind of like, screw all that. I'm going to be in charge of everything. And I don't really care about the Sith. I care about being in charge but maybe i'm wrong like he could he could have been fanboying out about the sith too yeah but also with bane he, he wasn't like a pioneer he kind of learned everything from from Ren. not everything but he learned a lot from that whole yeah from Ren. <laughs> yeah that's a good point um he just is a very important historical figure you know establishing the rule of two and then killing all of those other sith uh you know and sort of forging a new future for the sith and in some ways you could say preserving them maybe because maybe they would have been wiped out had they not done that i don't know who do you think will be the last the next jedi to show up in the bad batch mm. don't know yeah who knows i think luke's gonna show up in there but mm. like oh, as a wait, kid bad, as a bad, baby i was actually thinking of book of boba sorry uh as okay. far as the next jedi in bad batch i don't know they could even yeah, there's do too many shows one. of these yeah I know, right? boba <laughs> Yeah, they could do uh, any number of ones. I'd love to see if maybe Mace was still around, but they could honestly do a Jedi we haven't even met yet. You know, like, why not Wreck 14 or whatever the heck that dude's name was? Look at that comment. Hmm. What does it say? Watch the last Jedi movie, bro. <laughs> Dude, that actually would be a good one to watch again. I haven't seen it in a long time. And people yeah, would either. love to, to watch us because, like, we honestly, we could if you want to. We could let's do a vote. Maybe we could. Can we put a vote up on Movie Bros yet, or maybe on Twitter or something? I could do it right now. That would be the first movie we watch on the channel. I know, right? So some people would like it. Oh, of course, they would like it. <laughs> oh man! Has to pull here on the, on the channel. Um, going off Star Wars theories video on Ray possibly being a clone. Do you think her dark side version vision of herself was the original Ray? Oh, mm -hmm. no, I don't think they thought that deep into it. No, I think it's just an allegory for just the Luke thing, right? When they're turning Luke. dark. Yeah. Do you think a gray Jedi can master the dark side and light side of the force simultaneously? Something Marin says in Jedi Fallen Order makes me believe you can master the dark side uncorrupted thoughts. Um, yeah, I think because there is no really dark side or light side. There's just the force. Right. I so, think it would be reserved for people like, uh, oh man, because like the Bendu is, is that, right? Where like yeah. he uses the dark and the light and he seems to be in perfect balance. And he actually views Kanan as a violent storm. I loved that line when he said that. He's like, your presence here is like a violent storm because Kanan is so light side that it's throwing the balance of the planet completely off. And I, I love that idea. But I think that the thing is, if you were truly balanced, you're almost it's almost like you don't exist. Like, how much do we actually think the Bendu 
was doing anything. He wasn't really interfering with anything because that would be him picking a side, right? He's just kind of existing. So, I don't know. It's interesting. For a future rule of two, someone who worked with John Williams on the music would be able to hear some insight into making of the score. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Dude, I've actually got a dude. I wanted to talk to you about this. The guy that designed the Yoda puppet. I've been put in contact with this dude. And oh. yeah, and he uh, he he might be a good guest for either Rule of Two or maybe the October our show. charity stream. Yeah, or our show. Like either way. But if he's um, your guest, you know, he's going to be our show. Oh, I mean, I'm not particular about that. I mean, honestly, like you guys have kind of established the interview stuff over there. Well, then um, then I'll bring you with us. Then it's, cool. you know, yeah, I'm yeah. down. I mean, he seems like a nice dude. I saw him on uh, on another stream, and uh, yeah, he seems he seems real chill. Seems like a really fun guy, man. So. Cool, man. That'd be neat. Um, everyone, stop what you were doing and sub to the Knights of Melbourne. <laughs> Agreed. Do it. I co sign that. Yeah, I co sign it too. I still can't wait for the charity stream. Yeah, dude, I really want to raise a hundred thousand dollars. I think that'd be, awesome. be cool. Dude, that'd be sick. Yeah, that'd be great. So um, October 15th, make sure you guys are there. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add? Um, no, 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 no. I would just say, uh, you know, oh. if, if you liked this uh, this discussion, this idea, you know, make sure you uh, like and subscribe. Go over to Movie Bros. And also put some positivity in the comment section, man. Like, really and truly, I think this could be a move to, to really put things back together and, and begin to make things right. As, Dude. Uh, Lower Dude, that's Josh, right. Spaceballs is at fifty-one percent. Yikes! On the on the poll, <laughs> so people 52%. are fifty-two percent. Oh man! Okay, I mean, good. look, I love Spaceballs, so I'm down. I'm hoping it wins. I'm pulling for Spaceballs. Well, you wanted to watch the Last Jedi? What's wrong with you? No, I don't. That's what I'm saying. I want. Oh, okay. I want that uh, Spaceballs to win, so we watch that. Or am I? I think that would be a great first one. Yeah. Let me see. I'm gonna go to it right now and vote. Which Jedi? Bar Anakin, who never fell to the dark side, do you think would have been the best apprentice to Darth Sidious? Mace Windu. Mace would have been great. Honestly, 100%. if he could have turned yeah. Obi Wan, he would have been great too. He's got a lot of potential, but no, Obi Wan is actually super weak. I've heard this before. I'm. I don't know if that is that is that a. It's a legends thing. Yeah, I don't know if that's the way that it is anymore. I mean, no, it's it, actually a canon thing because Qui Gon was even yeah in in Master Apprentice. Qui Gon was even like at when I was his age, and he was talking about Obi Wan. That's true. Yeah. I was doing this and this and this already. I do remember that. That's true. Yeah, and he's like frustrated with Obi Wan's uh, how weak he is. Hey, but, you know, he's he's like sucks. Yeah. But Obi Wan proves himself at the end of that book, and he's he does. He, he's yeah. he's tough. And I mean, like, dude, he beats Vader. You know what I mean? Like, so it's kind of a nice. Okay, the only reason he beat Anakin was because he was just more patient and experienced. He wasn't actually more powerful. He was just the master of Source Sue, so he was just blocking everything really well. But had it gone on longer, had it was it in let's say an arena like Hulk versus Thor, yeah, Thor Ragnarok, I think, I think Anakin would have won. I think so too, but he kind of like. I think the thing is about Obi Wan is like he put he he puts his uh, he puts the whole galaxy on his back essentially in that fight, right? Like he's basically just yeah. and it's against his own. I mean, you know, we don't want to have to gush about Sith, but I mean, dude, it's like amazing, right? Like he's literally saying like you were my brother. Like he's having a breakdown during the fight, and yet still focused, determined, powerful enough, you know, connected to the Force enough. To step up to the plate kind of for all of us you know what i mean so yeah yeah he's strong he's strong i guess so he still won yeah yeah you're right he did he did only one more only one movie a week for the channel or every two days um look i'll tell you this if the channel starts to really pop off huge yeah we'll do more then josh and i can uh you know allocate more time to it and take it away from our other channels yeah but until that happens, yeah, we'll just do one a week. Yep. Yep. And uh, yeah, we're just going to play it by ear. And uh, look, we are pumped about it. We are both pumped about it. So if you guys are pumped about it too and it picks up momentum, we'll go hard. You know, let me, let me tell you my vision for the channel. You know, what I always have like a goal sort of when I create a channel, except for Star Wars Theory. I never, I, I created it and I forgot about it for like three weeks to a month and I didn't even think anything of it. And I was just, this is so cool. But, now that I'm more established as being um, 
creating content. What I would love for Movie Bros to turn into would be for it to be a several million sub channel where we're flown out by different movie studios, major movie studios, to watch their movie, do a review video on it, and just be bros that get you know access to movies early and 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 oh, reviewing yeah. them and become this like massive freaking movie critic. I think that would be super fun. I think it would be super cool. Yeah. And um yeah, who knows? But in the meantime, we're just going to be a bunch of dudes watching Spaceballs tomorrow night at five o'clock. So, yeah, dude, I think that's <laughs> I think that's a fun thing. And the the thing that's cool about it, too, is like, you know, you and I have developed our rapport over the course of doing this show. And so, like, our chemistry is at like an all time high. So, mm -hmm. like, go, you know, I, I think it really spawned from that watch party, man, and just the impromptu and, and the it's fun it. that we had. And it's like. We want to bring that to uh, to other movies. We both love movies. Like I went to film school, so I get a little hoity toity about some of my film stuff. Oh, you know? okay. But uh, yeah, no, I love uh, I love this stuff, and I love making content. So we're excited. Yeah, definitely. I didn't know you went to film school. It's cool. Yeah, I'll show you some of my uh, some of my short films. I'll send you some of my films that I did in college. They were they were fun, man. Nice. Yeah, I made short films too, but. Uh... Yeah, I was like 10. <laughs> yeah. Dude, so. one of my favorite ones I did in freshman year was a Western, but instead of uh, the draws, like, you know, a duel, it was a staring contest. And I called nice. it If Looks Could Kill. And it was, dude, it was fun. It was funny. Nice. Yeah. Do you still have it? You should upload it. We could upload yeah. that on, on this channel if you want. Yeah, I have it. Uh, Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. And uh, yeah, I'm down. I'm down to put it out Check there. Check subs. I, so yeah, blowing man, up. blowing Almost up nine thousand. Dang! Wow, that's crazy. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, I always wanted to create a channel, um, kind of like Jeremy John's, where he just you know watches a movie and reviews it. I'm like, I yeah. would love to do that. That's so yep. cool because I do that, not having a channel too, but you know, to do it with you would be awesome. Absolutely, be even more fun. I know. So, I'm pumped. And if people people want P Apple want to watch it, then great. Okay, guys. Um, I think pretty much it. Yeah, that's a fun one, man. I'm excited. Let's go. Yeah, let's go, dude. We'll see you guys tomorrow night at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 8 Eastern on Movie Bros. And, um, of course, next week on Nerd Theory for the next episode. And for the next episode of Star Wars Theory tomorrow and The Den of Nerds. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i knock something out tomorrow for sure. A lot really, of fun. I didn't, I didn't wild wanna... stuff that you're going to make something and then you just and then not make it no no i'll definitely i have a couple different ideas uh and i'm going to do a watch party tomorrow night uh well i guess technically wednesday morning for the what if episode at like 2 30 a.m when it goes so yeah it's gonna be good i searching a bunch i can't find the channel oh okay well let me it's, let me just put it in the description for everybody right now oh you know what it doesn't even show up because it's so new yeah, I think that's part of it. But the more and more people visit it, it'll get the algo love. Like I literally created this channel two days ago, and it's at almost ten thousand, which is I know. It's thank you guys. We, we love the support. We want to you know continue to support, dude. Just blow that channel up. Yep. Yep. Be sweet. We're, Fulfill we're our dream. Have us flown out to Universal Studios and watching movies in their theater, and we'll bring you guys along with us. Yeah, it'd be, be awesome. That'd be neat. Okay, well, see you guys later. <laughs> Peace. Wait. Got to hit him with the... No, let's do a new one today. All right, what are you feeling? <laughs> People are saying, confront your fear, watch The Last Jedi. No! Yeah, well, Spaceballs is at 54%, so... Nice. Okay, bye. I thought not. It's not a story the Jedi would tell you. <laughs>